Physics networking is one of the hardest things to try and do because the best you can do is lie. I'm serious. In a multiplayer game, there's always lag. There's always going to be, because there's always going to be a delay from when you put input into your computer and it reaches the other person's computer. There's just, there's no way around this. There's always going to be a little bit of lag. So what we do is we try to predict where players are going to be based on the input we've already seen. This is called lag compensation. There's no one way to do lag compensation. When this comes to a game where physics are at play, how do we account for when players interact? How do I account for when, if I were to collide with you on my screen and someone else collides with you on their screen, who, who wins? Who, who goes where? Who determines what? The truth is, there isn't really an answer to that question, and that's just a design call you have to make. I've been worshipping and studying the GDC talk done by the Rocket League developers on how they do networking in their games, and it's quite simple actually. Everyone simulates their physics locally and sends that physics frame to the server for the server to approve, and if the server approves, we just play on, but if the server disagrees with where our physics are, we simply just re-simulate that frame. Um, simply. But still, what happens if two players collide? We still have this problem where one of them is more than likely going to have a different situation than the other one, um, than the server's almighty decision. This is why my latest game, Jelly Brawl, was a bad idea. <laughs> if there's only one master server that everyone refers to, this is either going to cause crazy input lag, um, but no collision issues because we're all referring to just the one collisions determined by the host, um, or we're going to have manageable input lag, but we're gonna have a lot of self-corrections because we're constantly gonna to have to re-correct ourselves based on the server's decision, which is not very fun. These self-corrections occur because of the physics engine um, in your game engine of choice. For Unity, it's using the PhysX engine, which is non-deterministic, meaning two uh, identical physics collisions could end up different on two different machines. So additionally, factoring in the fact that because of network lag that we're always going to have, um, creates different positions, different velocities on each machine. We're also just already adding on that there's going to be differences in how the machines determine where the collisions are going to go. So we've created an impossible problem. So what I decided for my game is that everyone is their own host. You determine your position, velocity, angular velocity, all that, so that way it feels smooth to you while you play. However, because of this, there will be corrections on other players as they determine their own position and velocity, so it can create a laggy feeling when looking at other players and where they are. This is a sacrifice I chose to make. You might choose to do it differently, um, but I find that it makes the game far more playable. To implement this, I found an article done by a Joe Best Rothray who implemented uh, essentially the Rocket League networking solution done in Unity. Um, where he essentially simulates the physics frame, passes it to the server, the server approves. If not, we re-simulate. Um, however, what he did is he has two players, one invisible, one visible. The invisible one is the one that you actually apply the networking inputs to, while the visible one is just interpolated to that, so that way it smooths out any rough errors. What I changed to the system for my game is since I'm treating everyone as their own host, everyone uh, simulates their physics, sends their physics to the other clients, uh, timestamps so then when they receive it they check to see the timestamp if it's newer than what they've last received from us um, and their player is different from where the physics frame is different from theirs we send we apply that update to their client additionally where my system differs from Joe's is I apply inputs directly to the visible player allowing for better interactability with the visible player um, and additionally the invisible player is the one I set all of the positions rotations to and we interpolate our visible player to that similar to Joe's I also decided that uh, there would be a threshold of not only just position, but also velocity that if we surpass it, immediately set the player to the networked position. That way uh, we don't get so out of sync um, and we just sacrifice the smoothing for accuracy. In a similar vein, I also have a margin of error for the position, so if you get within a certain uh, threshold of the true position by the network, uh, we stop setting the position on the visible player and interpolating it. That way the physics just take over to smooth it out. Um, this is obviously smoother than interpolating it because the physics simulation looks smoother than interpolation. I'll be posting my version of this script up on GitHub. There will be a link in the description. I am no networking genius, but I wanted to share what I learned because I struggled with this for months, so I wanted to make sure my efforts did not go to waste and somebody at least got something out of it. But like I said, if you see ways to improve this, please leave a comment down below. Leave a issue on the GitHub page. Thank you all for watching. Love you. Hope this helps.